All right, I'm back again quickly to show you how to do the handle, which I forgot before. So it makes sense to have them both <coughs> done and drying overnight. So I've just got this bit of um, braid. It, it's a, still a part of the initial um, lace cloth. This was like a bit of a border around the edge of it. So I'm going to put this so that it hangs either side of the jar because you need a bit of length to attach it to the inside of the basket. Now it's got a tear there, it doesn't matter um, because that will all come together in the end and I will show you how to strengthen it so that it stands up like that. If you saw me do that then. <laughs> Alright so I'm just going to do the same thing as before just gluing it down so that it um, has a bit of a heavy coating of glue which will then oops, stiffen the fabric. I started saying fabric now. <laughs> Always say material, that's how we refer to um, material here. And now because I've been, um, <clears throat> I guess, speaking to a lot of Americans right, lately and I've ended up saying the same thing as them. It, it doesn't matter, it really does it. It's, you know, fabric material, it's the same thing. And we know what we mean. I'm just waffling here for something to say, I think. <laughs> Try and keep that um, fairly straight. It's difficult though because you've got such a thin, um, a thin band of the material fab fabric, <laughs> fabric material, um, and yeah, it doesn't want to stay to start with, but it will behave itself eventually and like with the um, <clears throat> the basket sort of side of it we'll have probably have to do two coats but let's see what it's like tomorrow okay so I'll leave it there for now and I'll be back tomorrow when it's dry ta-da Okay, it's the next day now, and I'm back ready to show you a bit more about this nice basket I'm going to make. Um, so, it's dried overnight, and what I did, I actually went ahead and put another coat of glue on it, because I thought that's probably best to do it off camera, so you're not bored staring at me doing more gluing. So what I'll do now, it's it's fairly stiff. There are some bits that are a little bit soft, but if I find that it's too um, soft inside when I get it off, I'll zap it quickly with the hairdryer. <coughs> Excuse me, and it should um, finish it off. It's a little bit tricky getting it out of the jar, particularly this one because it's so much tighter. <laughs> Got a feeling now you're going to be here for three hours watching me trying to get it off. This needs something to wedge in there and loosen the plastic, I think. The other one that I did, the bigger one that I did with, on the plastic was a lot easier to get off than this. So, um, never fear, it's not always this difficult. It's very windy today outside. I, um, 
I just had to go out and tie up one of our plants because it was waving about in the wind and it was about to fall over. And um, it was also creating, you might even still get a bit now, of um, shadows moving all the time. So I'm hoping, I might actually just switch the light on in here. So it might help a bit. Although most of my videos I've noticed that um, the daylight seems to be enough to be able to view what I'm doing okay, which is good because I was thinking I might have to go and invest in um, a heap of fancy expensive lighting. Uh, this is really proving tricky. glass and giving it a really good tug. <clears throat> Typical. <laughs> if I was doing this quietly on my own, it would come off really easily. It's starting to come away, see? If you can see the bottom of the glass, is, there's an empty space there. Come on. Viewers don't want to watch this. Just behave yourself. <laughs> ah, got you. At last. Alright, so you can see it's um, taken the shape really nicely. So what I'll do is cut off what I wanted to have was a bit of an overhang so I could fold it over and just make that edging look a bit neater than how it turned out with the first one I did. But I don't know, that's going to make all that much difference now I look at it. It's still a little bit wet inside. I might just, um, I'll switch off, dry it and come back. Alright, it's dry, so now I'll just trim off the edge. Um, yes, if I fold that in, you've still got that. So I'll do what I did with the other one. I'll just trim this off and make a neat edging. Oh, bits flying everywhere. Yes, yeah, to say about the windy weather before, it's uh, we've had a really cold uh, much colder than normal winter this year here in Australia and um, even a couple of our northern states which are very warm particularly in summer they get quite hot um, but in the winter time a lot of us southerners go up north to um, be in the warmth over winter time this year they've had snow and um, some of the photos I've seen online are quite thick um, snow, which is really unusual. And uh, here we've, um, <clears throat> the past couple of mornings, it's uh, been really freezing cold outside. And we have a bird bath right by the dining room window, um, which I love to watch the birds come and have a splash around. And, and um, watch them and they don't know, they can't see us, they don't know we're watching them so they you know, feel happy to be um, you know, naturally enjoying themselves without being scared. So the last couple of mornings um, the water in the bird bath has been frozen which um, this morning wasn't too bad, there was a uh, a bit of ice covering on the surface but the previous couple of mornings it was frozen almost solid <laughs> it's pretty damn cold <laughs> I mean, probably you northern hemisphere people would think nothing of that because you get that all the time but it's a big deal to us here ah, you get 
it all set up, you think you've got everything. Switch the camera on and no, you're missing something. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do next, because I've got sort of pokey bits that don't look that great. Um, what I did with this one, I get a bit of calico. What I think um, I've seen others call muslin. Yeah, we call it calico here. So I'll cut a strip sort of fold over the edges and then I'll go over that just to make it look nicer and then I'll put the braid around the um, edge to make it look nice. Just tidy up all that horrible edging. So yeah, I normally like to be outside in the garden I just love being outdoors. I'm a real outdoorsy person. And um, the past few winters haven't been, you know, so bad and I've been able to be out there and enjoy it. And the dogs have too. This winter, no, nah, it's been much too cold for me. I really don't like the cold. I don't know. <laughs> I'd be hopeless in the Northern Hemisphere. I don't um, think I'd ever go out during the winter if I lived up there which is um, funny really because I was born in England came over here with my family when I was six and a half years old I've been here ever since of course and consider myself pretty much a true blue Aussie now although some of my Aussie friends say that um, they can tell that I'm English because my accent isn't quite um, as Australian as, as they are. And I think that some, some of the word, ways I pronounce certain words, like I'll say Australia and they'll say Australia. <laughs> and this, they, they think that I'm a little bit um, pommy because I don't say Australia. <laughs> is fair enough. <laughs> now I think I might have overturned that a bit much so it won't take as much on that side. What I do to crease it I just run the helps if you can see. <laughs> just run the scissors handle to crease it like you would with paper I suppose. So you don't have a bone folder. There's all that fiddly <coughs> type of work to be done, but it's worth it in the long run. Right. So then we've got the trusty glue gun, which um, is all tangled, <laughs> which is fantastic. I, my hubby originally, I always say hubby because he does the shopping, so he, he gets me things when he goes shopping. Um, he got me a really cheap glue gun from a big department store and although it worked, it annoyed me because it was constantly dribbling glue out of the nozzle when I wasn't using it, it was switched on so I had to switch it off every time in between using it and then switch it back on again and I wasted a lot of glue with it too because um, it would just dribble and it, since I don't have a um, a glue pot to heat it up and reuse it it's not going to stand up for me now <laughs> stand up Oh, you're annoying me. It's not good to leave it on the side for very long because it heats up and it, um, according to instructions, is that it could damage the glue gun that way. But if it won't stand up, not much I can do. Yeah, so then we got this new one from 
an actual art supply store which was still reasonably cheap but um, works really well and doesn't dribble now I've said that it'll probably do it <laughs> uh, I um, don't use the glue gun terribly much and um, I often hear people saying oh you know ouch I burnt myself and I uh, never really got that until I started doing it myself and wow it does hurt <laughs> if you happen to touch it when it's still really hot so I'm just glued a little bit to hold that down and now I will actually put that big side there I was watching um, Josie Gito last night and she's doing a beautiful um, canvas a Finnebar inspired canvas where you stick um, a whole lot of odd bits and pieces on the canvas around a <laughs> around a photo of um, uh, either you know like a picture in a magazine or um, some other like really nice picture of, of a like a vintage girl or something like that or even a photo I've done one myself with a photo of my daughter in it which turned out really beautifully Anyway, Josie was saying about the hot glue gun, about all these stringy bits and how annoying they are. And then she said that she noticed that if she was using it on a canvas that she then gessoed over, such as with the Finnebar canvas, you put the bits on and then you gesso over them and then you um, spray inks on them. She was saying that um, if you happen to miss some of the stringy bits and then when you do the gesso, the gesso shows up all the stringy bits and it looks really cool. And um, I thought, oh, out, see, look, I just burnt myself. Ouch. <laughs> you forget too with this lace that um, it's got holes in it. Of course the glue is going to go through. Now it's all stuck to my fingers. Yeah, so Josie was saying about the glue strings looking really cool with gesso over the top sort of gives me an idea that it would be actually nice to do an abstract um, just a little abstract canvas with the glue um, with all the little stringy bits in it I think that would look nice I might have to give that a go. See what it turns out like. <coughs> Drinks everywhere. Noisy. Sorry, this is um takes a long time to do. Especially when you're not that good at using a glue gun. Stay. Oh good, it listened. Talk to it like I talk to the dogs. <laughs> They're not um, in the room with me at the moment. They're in the other room. Sometimes they'll stay outside during the day when the weather's warmer. And we particularly put them outside when we have visitors because <clears throat> they're big dogs and um, some people are scared of them and sometimes our dogs are scared of the people. <laughs> but they love to be outside. Quite often we will um, let them out to go do their business and then go to let them back in and they don't want to come back inside. <laughs> I just want to run around and play together, so it's alright as long as the weather's not extreme, particularly in summer when it's, you know, super hot. We get really horrible hot summers. The um, Our summers are very dry, 
There's very rarely any humidity in the air. So yeah, it's scorching. This isn't looking all that great, isn't it? <laughs> Doing a really good botched up job. <laughs> oh well. I guess you get the picture of how it works anyway. That's what the demo videos are about really, is just to show you how to do something and hopefully inspire you to say have an idea about it yourself and say, oh, I think it would look better if I did this or that. And you go off and do what you like, which is good. Mm. I've forgotten now how I stuck the other one on. I don't know if I used the glue gun or not. I don't think I did. I wouldn't have stitched it on because that takes far too long. And like I said before, I do have a bit of a problem with memory. Particularly short term memory. My husband will tell me something and um, in less than five minutes I've completely forgotten either what he said or that he spoke to me at all. It must be frustrating for him. What else can I tell you? Well, I did start to talk about the dogs the other day and then I lost a fair bit of content because sometimes this camera will um, switch off. I, I figured out it's not actually switching off, it's stopping recording and um, we think that that's to do with the memory card that it only lasts for a period of eight minutes. and. We were going to try a longer, a larger um, size memory card, but then Hubby said something about it being problematic in other ways about uploading and all of that, so we didn't bother. So I'm stuck with the eight minute thing. So yeah, as I was saying, sometimes it won't beep and let me know that it's off. So here I am, working away, chatting merrily, <laughs> and I'm not realising that I've missed a whole chunk. So if you're interested, I'll start again without uh, too much glue. I'll start again to explain to you. So both our dogs are rescue dogs. Um, Bandit is the oldest. He's um, just turned 14 in May. He is a um, he's a cross between a red healer and an English bull terrier. So um, <clears throat> and he's got a lot of personality of an English bull terrier where they think they're lap dogs. <laughs> um, very, very people oriented, want to be with you, close to you, touching you almost all the time. Um, yeah, and, and also a bandit really loves, he wants all the attention on himself. He's a, <laughs> he's a, um, a bit of a show pony, I suppose. Um, He's funny, anyway. He, 
does the funniest things to get your attention if you're not noticing him. <laughs> yeah, he's a lovely dog. We got him from a um, shelter called the Lost Dogs Home here. And um, we lost our previous dog was a black Labrador cross. And we had his mother and we saw him being born so we had him all of his life. We saw him being born and then was with him when he eventually had to go. Um, and it was quite a few years after that that I eventually was ready to get another dog because losing him was, was really hard and I missed him so much. Um, so then we eventually decided it was time to get another dog and we wanted to get a rescue dog so we went to the lost dogs home and we were looking at getting a smaller dog then um, but then we came across Bandit and he's just so beautiful I'll have to show you them soon um, and he just won, won us over so we um, took him out for a walk and um, found that he was really easy to handle, really good dog, so we, we got him. And we had him for two years and then we decided to get a companion for him so that um, if he was um, had to be left at home alone during the day then he, he had a companion. So we came across Clyde, who was already named Clyde. Um, he was um, advertised in the newspaper Free to Good Home and there were um, the owners had two other dogs so they had three dogs all together and they'd moved into an apartment and weren't able to keep the dogs anymore so they gave them away and downsized to a cat instead so we saw um, that Clyde was advertised in the newspaper, contacted the people and they um, sent us a photo of him via email and we decided to go down and have a look at him and see what he was like. We took Bandit with us so that he could um, have a look at him as well and, and we could judge how you know, if they were going to get along all right together or not. Okay, so now I'm just covering this over so it looks nicer. And, um, yeah, when we first got there, they brought Clyde out into the driveway <clears throat> for us to meet him and, and for um, Bandit to meet him as well. And... At first we were a little bit um, wary of him because he he reared up on his back legs and was barking and he has a really deep scary sounding voice and um, we thought oh this dog's probably not going to be the one for us and the owners um, kept trying to reassure us no no he's he's all right he's harmless really, he's not aggressive, he's just excited. He's excited to see another dog and wants to play. So we and and you know when my daughter and I went together to go and see him and um he was fine with people. He you know loved you know seeing us and loved us um patting him and and um, so then we thought, oh, we'll get Bandit out of the car and we'll see how that goes. And if they don't get along, well, we won't go ahead. So um, we brought Bandit out and Clyde was still doing the rear up on his hind legs and barking really loudly. And I was really nervous, you know, because I thought, oh, what if something happens? What if he... What if they have a fight? <laughs> we can't get them apart. <laughs> we worry about stuff like that. 
But anyway, it turned out it was fine. We decided maybe Clyde was just a bit, you know, being a bit fussy because he was on his own property and he was maybe being a bit um, protective. So we took them for a walk together and he was fine. He was having fun sniffing, following along behind Bandit. Um, and they got on okay, so then we decided yes, we would um, we'd take him. So we took him there and then that day um, after spending a bit of time there with the owners. And um, the poor thing um, threw up in the car on the way back to our place. So that's when we discovered oh, this is a dog that gets car sick. So, um, yeah, and it's, it was a problem at first, but we sort of adjusted to, um, you know, we have to just um, be careful when we take him in the car. And I think we got some um, stuff from the vet actually. It's been a while since I've. Well, I don't drive anymore, and it's been a while since we've had reason to take them in the car. Um, apart from to the vet, and he's okay, that's a short distance, so. Yeah, so we got him home, and um, he was 10 months old at the time. He was quite a big, sizable dog. He's a, um, a cross between a blue healer, and which is an Australian cattle dog, I think. Um, People who don't live here might be able to understand what what a blue healer is and a red healer as well. So I'll put this trim on the inside as well. Um, but I might do that later because I don't know if you want to watch me doing that as well. Um, I'll show you with the handle. This comes up a lot more easily. Actually, I'll be back in a minute. 